Hi guys and welcome to The Truth Hurts with me, Tony Quinn. The Truth Hurts is a show about recovery and everything in between. Okay, anyway, thank you for watching and also I have a new setup. I have a ring light, I have a little stand and I am getting a microphone and a better camera. I just want to apologize for the previous videos where it looks like I'm literally filming through a potato but it's because I have an old laptop and the old setup that we have hasn't been at the house since lockdown so I'm just trying to rebuild and yeah anyway so I wanted to do this video today because I had breakfast with my sponsee this morning that's the the woman that I I kind of sponsor in the narcotics anonymous program and we do the 12 steps together and she's the best but anyway shout out um, so we were discussing what happens to you once you put down the drugs you know when you first go into recovery the drugs are all you know the person you become on the drugs is the only part of you that you're left with. You don't know who you are. And so you go into recovery and you're kind of left with this empty vessel and that you need to fill, that you, you, you need to do the work to figure out who you really are and what you are. And it's lonely and it's difficult. And a lot of people, because of that, will find themselves cross-addicting. So a cross-addiction is finding something outside of yourself once you put down the booze, once you put down the drugs, and something that you spend your time obsessing over, kind of like you would with the drugs. So you would plan your day around that thing or plan your week around that thing. And that thing gives you the adrenaline rush and makes you excited and it becomes a big part of your identity, whatever it is. So for some people, uh, a lot of people in Narcotics Anonymous will become, will cross addict to, for example, gym or bodybuilding and that becomes a big part of their life. Their life gets planned around it. And I mean, it's healthier, even Waffle says so. It's a, it's a healthier um, addiction. It's better than heroin or meth, but you do, you build your life around that because you are trying to once again, fill what they call fill the, the hole inside of yourself. And you know, you, you, you find something else. So for me, when I first went into recovery the first time and the second time, I actually cross-addicted to the same thing. Yes, Waffles, I did. So I found myself, this is going to sound really weird, but cross-addicting to iced coffee, freezer chinos. But that was also to fuel my eating disorder. So a lot of people are going to say, well, wouldn't your eating disorder have been a cross-addiction from the drugs and the alcohol? But for me, my eating disorder is my primary problem. And I feel like the addiction is actually a cross, of, a, a cross addiction from that. But that's a whole other story. So I found myself addicted to iced coffee. And just like with drugs, I would plan my entire day around getting the iced coffee. I would wake up in the morning, get dressed, go to my coffee shop and get two. Then I would go home, put the one in the freezer, finish it, go back to the other one. Once that was finished, go back to the shop, go back to the coffee shop and get more and repeat the same pattern over and over again. And that became my day. And that, for example, is similar to addiction and an unhealthy coping mechanism and something outside of myself, you know? So that's basically what cross addiction is. Also, a lot of people will cross addict to relationships and become incredibly codependent. That's why they say to people in addiction, you shouldn't get into a relationship within the first year because you cross addict to another person. You look at them to fill that emptiness inside of yourself. They become a part of your identity. Your days are spent around that person and you spend your time obsessing with that person. So it's a similar kind of behavior to that of drugs. And when I went into rehab the, the last time, the one that we rehab that stuck so far, um, I went in at the age of 26 with three, four, five, five tattoos. So I had, um, one for my, for my cousin on my back, one for my cousin on my side, one tiny little one I got when I was drunk and 16 or, or 15 or 14 that I got with my friend Claudia. Hey Claude, shout out bitch. So we got those like idiots and it's a little baby tattoo, but we still friends. So it, it works. And then I had two on my feet. And now, eight years later, I have two full sleeves. I have basically my whole leg is done. And I'm working on the other. I've got my back. I've got uh, I've got in a few places, my sides. And 
that has definitely become a cross addiction. And I only started with the tattoos four years ago. So all of this I have done in the span of four years. And it's definitely a cross addiction. You know, people will say, um, why, why do you do, it, do that? And in the beginning it was, well, and it still is. It's a form of self-expression. It's a part of who I am and I love it and I love it so much, but it is a cross addiction. For me specifically, I'm not saying that pe all people with tattoos do that. For me, it's 100% a cross addiction. And it's also a way of me controlling my body again. again. Because when I had the eating disorder, I felt that sense of control, even though it was the opposite of control. But I felt that. And with the drugs, I was in control of my of, of going to get the drugs. I wasn't in control. But, you know, you feel a sense of control. And tattoos became a new way for me to to control my body and own my body but in a more positive way than I was doing previously so instead of starving myself I put a piece of art on myself and it, you, you need to know when to put down the boundaries with that kind of stuff specifically for addicts and and for me I know I do when I started getting them you know my, my family was really upset I come from a, a Jewish family and it's like a big no-no in the community, even though it's become incredibly acceptable now. And it, it, it hurts a lot of people in my family that I was doing this to my body. But I try to explain to them that it's a different way for me to control my body. But if I had to look at it um, genuinely and try to unpack why I, I do it and why I started, I think it, it all comes down to, to the attention side of things, to the being noticed, standing out in, in a crowd, which is something I've always struggled with and wanted because, you know, I was always the ugly duckling. I, I felt bullied in school and I just wanted to stand out and be, be my own person even though I was creating a character and I wasn't myself. I became goth in high school for like a year because, you know, I wanted something different. I wanted something myself and I, I wanted to wear this mask so people wouldn't hurt me. And tattoos are exactly the same thing. So if I'm honest with myself, the reason that I started and the reason I can't stop is because I enjoy that side of it. I enjoy the looks, I enjoy the questions, and I would be lying if I said I didn't. Anyway, so that's my cross addiction. But what I figured out recently is that I need to put boundaries down with it. Because in the past like few months, I obviously haven't been tattooed. And... I feel like I'm missing something, you know, and it's that and that's unhealthy. I should get tattooed after spending time thinking of a design instead of acting impulsively like I have been. I mean, I got my leg done basically in a few months and it's because I just wanted it. I wanted it and it's it's similar to addiction and, and I love it. I love the release of it and I would be, I love planning it. I love thinking about it. I love the act of going to get tattooed. You know, it gives me that adrenaline rush. I hate sitting for a tattoo. That is the fucking worst. It's like hot fire all over your body. But I still go through it because I love it. I love the self-expression out of it. And I'm addicted to it. So the way I cope with it is I feel like I need to put boundaries down. Obviously, it's healthier than everything I've ever done to my body. And it's beautiful and it's self-expression. But my boundary is to never get my chest tattooed and to stay away from that area. Because if I had to cross that boundary, I wouldn't know when to stop, just like with a drink. One is too many, a thousand is never enough for someone like me. My other cat's here. You know what, I'm like on such a roll, and then these little guys... Oh, fuck! <laughs> it's Carl! So you know I spoke about my cross addiction to freezer chinos and tattoos? Carl brought me a freezer chino. There he is. Thanks, baby. Thank you. There's some food here. Okay, cool. I'm gonna watch the game. Okay, love you. So sorry about that. So, geez, that's so bad. I'm like, I cross addicted to something and I'm working through it and then, but it's really, it's not like it used to be. So I put the boundary down for myself. I am not going to work on this area. And I feel like that's what we need to do. We need to, if you're an addict, in your, if you're in recovery and you have found yourself cross addicted to something, you need to be aware of it. You need to be aware of why. And you need to put boundaries down to stop yourself from getting into the same pattern you did with drugs. And that is your cross addiction affects your relationships. It, it, your days are planned around it. Your weeks are planned around it. And we need to put boundaries in place to stop that from happening. And that's what I've done.
and I've got my boundaries and I just need to be a bit more honest about the cross addiction and not just not lie about it and sugarcoat it like my dudes it's a cross addiction I'm 100% addicted to it and if I don't put the boundaries down I'm not going to know when to stop and that's just something I felt like we needed to talk about and what I want to do is instead of just going on and on and on about me I want to know from you guys who have been in recovery or who have tried recovery have you found yourself cross addicting to something if so what and what did you do to try stop it or to put boundaries in place or have you even done that do you feel like it's much better to be on that route than the old route and you're just happy and content with it or have you put boundaries down and all of that kind of stuff and then what I want to do is maybe do a video where we all speak to each other about what we've been through what we've cross addicted to and kind of unpack it and also have a professional on who can go a bit more into detail about the psychology behind cross addiction and why we find ourselves cross addicting. So yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about today. And I hope the new setup is a lot better. And I'm sorry for all the interruptions, but I mean, that's life. And I'm gonna get back to my, my old cross addiction, which I just wanna point out, I only have like once or twice a week now, not like 10 a day. So yeah, and not in winter. I used to always have them in winter. Now I just have them in summer. So, yeah. Thank you. And I will see you in the next episode.